we have in the probability unit done simple probability and we have discussed sample spaces and we have done tree diagrams and now we're going to do two concepts and that is compound probability and then the under, other concept is determining whether a probability is an independent or dependent event. So first we're going to go how to read a probability. When there are two events, the probability is written as an ordered pair or using the word and. The first number is for the first event and the second number is for the second event. Um, yes, order does matter. For example, a coin tossed and a dice rolled die. The first event is tossing the coin and the second event is rolling the die. So they would ask this P T of three means the probability of getting a tail on a coin and a three on the die. So when you did your T uh, tree diagrams, so tossing a coin H T and then that one had one, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't leave myself enough room. One, two, four, five, six. That would actually be a branch like that, you know, a bigger branch. So um, you would have to find out the probability. So the probability of two or more events can be found by multiplying. The probability of the first event by the uh, probability of the second event. Event one happens and event two happens. This is the only time and means to multiply. So if you, and I'll give you an example of what where you show where you have heard and before and you didn't multiply. If I th say three and four is seven, that's an add. But if I'm doing probability, this is an this an and it means multiply. So if I wanted to add, it would be or equals add in probability. Huge difference. All right, now we're going to get into independent versus dependent. Independent events are events where the first does not affect the second event. Is the example above an in, example of independent? event. So if I toss a coin and then roll a die, does the coin being tossed, does the die being rolled have anything to do with the coin being tossed? That would be a no and so that would be an ind this is an independent. If the outcome of the first one affects the outcome of the second one, then it is a dependent event. If you choose a pen from the container and replace it before you choose it again, it is an example of an independent. So if I have red, 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 blue, blue, and I pick a red, the probability of picking a red, probability of picking a red, and then a red, okay, picking a red would be three out of five and the probability of picking a red is three out of five and I multiply those together okay on contrast a dependent event is when the first event does affect the second event if you choose a pen from the container and do not replace it it will have an effect on the probability of what you can choose on the second pen it is a dependent event. I'm going to use the same sa sample space and do the probability of a red pen and a red pen. And on my first one, I have this probability of three out of five. But say I got it, he's now gone, and there are only two left with four choices. Okay, and if I do the math here, this is 9 over 25. This is 6 over 20. They are different, and one is an independent probability, one is a dependent probability. Your job 
is to classify them. Um, one of your jobs is to classify probability events as either independent or dependent. So let's try. You spin a spinner, you flip a coin. Does flipping a coin have anything to do with the uh, spinning a spinner? No, so it is independent. You randomly choose one of ten marbles, then you randomly choose one of the remaining nine marbles. Okay, that remaining nine means did not replace, and that is a huge tip off to be a dependent because on your first one you had the choice of ten. On the second one, you only had nine. And this is affected by you doing this event. You toss a coin twice. Independent. Has nothing to do, tossing the second coin has nothing to do with tossing the first coin. The sample space is not decreased and it is not affected. Okay. So we're going to how to calculate probability with replacement, which is an independent action. Um, so here we go. Suppose you have a dark closet, seven blue shirts, five yellow shirts, eight yellow shirts. So seven blue, five yellow, eight white. You pick two shirts at random from the closet, find the probability with replacing. Blue is 7 over 12, 20. We have 20 total. So blue is 7 over 20. And then yellow is 5 over 20. And then I'm going to multiply. Simplify before you multiply. 7 over 80. Okay. Yellow then yellow. 5 over 20, 5 over 20. That's 1 fourth, 1 fourth. 1 fourth times 1 fourth is 1 sixteenth. Yellow then white. 5 over 20 times 8 over 20. Simplify before you multiply. That's 1 fourth. That's uh two fifths, that's two, oh, two fifths, twentieths, which is one tenth. Okay. Blue then blue, seven over 20 times seven over 20, 14 over 20, which is seven tenths, which is 70%. Okay. Um, how to calculate probability without replacement, which is a dependent action. We are going to have the same dark closet and the same amount. So we still have seven blue, five yellow, eight white for a total of 20. And this is without replacement. So blue is seven out of 20. Now, if you drew it out, you're taking that shirt out of the closet. So I only now have 19 shirts left and five of them were, are yellow. And that gets into some other math because um, we're simplifying one and four. That's seven over 76. Okay, yellow then yellow. Five out of 20 take that shirt out of the closet. That means there's only four shirts left in 19. That is one nineteenth. Yellow then white. Five out of 20 for the yellow. White, there's still eight of them in there, but there's only 19 shirts. Um, 40 divided by 20 is 2, so that's um, 
2 over 19. Blue then blue. I have seven blue shirts out of 20. I take one away and then that's 19. That is 3 and 10. 21 over 190. There are six pennies, nine nickels, three dimes in a box. So six pennies, nine nickels, three dimes for a total of 18 total. Because remember, it's still yes over total. Two nickels without replacement, which means my sample space decreases. So it's 9 out of 18, 1 is in on the counter, 8 out of 17, and then that's 4 and 9, 36 over, oops, there's a 9 and a 9, 4 over 17. I almost had to multiply 17 times 9 and I wouldn't have been happy, Yeesh. so 4 seventeenths. One nickel, then one dime. So there's nine out of 18 for a nickel with replacement, which means 18 are still there. And a dime is three. That's one half, that's one sixth, one twelfth. Your answers have to be simplified fractions or they have to be decimals. Okay, last two problems. Nickel, then a dime. Ah, without replacement, which means um, my sample space is going to shrink. 9 over 18 times 1 over 17. That's 1 half, which is 1 34th. Which there's a way less chance I'm going to do that without replacement. Okay, penny and nickel, two nickels without replacement. That is actually three. So a penny is six out of 18 without replacement. Then my first nickel would be nine out of 17. And then my next nickel would be 8 out of 16 because if you had the 18 coins laying right here and you picked one out you have to set it aside and then you only have 17 left and then you pick a nickel and then you set it aside there's only 16 left but then now there's only 18 nickels or sorry eight nickels um, then you simplify before you multiply that's a half that's a half, that's three, so three out of 34. So um, your exercises are going to be able to, or you're going to calculate compound probability. You're also going to um, decide whether it's an independent or a dependent event. And I will also probably bring in some review questions. If you have any problems on your probability, please attend office hours. Thank you.